Look at this. Now, it looks like an ordinary 20 pence piece, and that's probably because it is an ordinary 20 pence piece. But recently, some of these, accidentally minted without the date on them, have been changing hands for around about 50 pounds. Now, that's a great example of how an ordinary, everyday item can also make the owner a tidy sum. But what other bits and pieces should we be looking out for? Well, I've come here to speak to collectibles expert and the presenter of the antique show, and everything must go, Jamie Breeze. Now, Jamie, it's not just uh, coins that are collectible, is it? You've got a whole host of things. Talk me through them. Absolutely. This is a, sh a veritable smorgasbord of collectibles. People um, can relate to all manner of things, especially when there's a big dose of nostalgia. Right at the top here, we've got some Spice Girl dolls. Big fan. Yeah. Yeah. These weren't limited edition, but they were, they got facsimile signatures. And they were good condition as well. That's a really important thing. Box them into two of the big things when it comes to collectibles these days. Um, this is one of my favourites. It's the third in the series of his dark materials by Philip Pullman. Um, it's worth about four hundred to five hundred pounds because it's in mint condition and it carries his signature. So uh, even fairly and comparatively modern books can be quite valuable. Um, here's a curious incident by Mark Haddon. Of course, one of a famous prize a few years ago. Um, a book collector, a book sniffer will want a book which is in absolutely pristine conditions. This is how the book first appeared to the world, and it is a first edition. It's got all the numbers ten down to one in any particular order. Back in the day, at a bookshop, the service would include removing the dust wrap and throwing it away. So that's why it's additionally of interest to a collector. And then if we go back into the past, um, annuals, comics and so forth, hugely collectible. Many of them can be you know, traded for thousands of pounds really? internationally these days. Wow. But without the dust jacket, it would probably be worth you know, a couple of hundred pounds, if that. Goodness now, uh, moving over here to the pigs. An awful lot of people kind of maybe born in the mid-70s. They may well recognise these. Who are they? A great limited edition. They were effectively free. And, of course, they were the famous NatWest piggies. Um, a complete family of four or five would cost you 180 to 250 pounds at the moment. They made some gold-painted ones, which were produced for competition winners yeah. and the directors of the bank. Now, if those ever do come onto the market and there are some fakes knocking around, be aware, okay. um, they are worth thousands of pounds. Kitchenalia, absolute classic. This is a really good example of a limited edition which has improved in value pretty quickly. I think they made three or four hundred thousand of these a few years ago and they made it just with a bit of Guinness, which is really nice. And it was a, a limited edition pot. Um, I know this one is selling on a well-known auction site for about uh, 20, 25 quid at the moment, which is amazing. There's one made with a bit of champagne, which is nice for yeah. Valentine's Day. Um, Particularly topical at the moment, this is a, uh, another limited edition. They've been made, um, much like with Champagne and Guinness, with Marston's beer, Marston's pedigree beer, which is the, the beer of the season, isn't it, with cricket. Um, the great thing is you can get these from all the sort of popular supermarkets, from Tesco's, the Sainsbury's. And look, it's got the seam from the cricket ball, it's in the shape, it's got a facsimile signature of Dickie Bird, a legend of course. And I would chance, if you keep them unopened, in mint condition in other words, buy a few of them, um, tuck them away for the future. They may well improve in value, much like the Guinness one has. So a, a great collectible of the now and one for the future, I'd say. Now, something that enthralls me is this. This belongs to me, so you can't have it. I'm not open to <laughs> offers, not even cash. Um, a few years ago, I, I was around Bermondsey Market, and I picked this up at what was effectively a car boot. Yeah. £3.50 in a box with the manuals. It has an amazing amount of memory, just half a K. Wow. Which is just a fifth of the average email now. I've seen one go uh, on the internet for 800 and 850 pounds. Goodness yeah, me. Yeah, probably drop down a little bit with the credit crunch upon us, maybe 700. These, to me, <laughs> They seem like nothing at all. Tell me what they are. Right, Starbucks card. In fact, it's like a rewards card. You put a five or a ten on it. Here's the deal, though. Mm. Um, not many people know this in England, but these are becoming really collectible around the world. This one was produced in November 2006. They gave each store about six of them in the UK to give to VIPs or regular coffee drinkers. Mm. I was both, of course. If you haven't used it, this is currently selling for 250 to 300 pounds on me. the internet. It's great, and it will only go up in value, I think. I've met uh, punters at car boot fairs who uh, have become famous for their finds. There was a, a couple called Les and Wendy Hind. I met them on GMTV a few weeks ago. Um, they came down to the Lee Mars and Car Boot Fair in the West Midlands where we were filming. And guess what? They brought a teapot at the end of the day, not just at the beginning when all the dealers are rummaging around, for just two pounds. Yeah. They thought, this is really nice, did some research. It turned out to be from the mid-1800s or the late 1800s. They took it to Christie's at London Auction House. It was valued at about 18 grand, 20 grand. <laughs> they sold it for near enough 20, 28,000 pounds in the end, I believe. Wow. So two pounds to nearly 30 grand. You know, that's quite a quantum leap. Jamie, thank you very much indeed. Now, we all know that we may well have a few pounds down at the back of the sofa, but who knows, if you look quite carefully, you may have more than a few pounds at the back of your kitchen larder as well.